It was the first live and in-person presentation in the council chamber since the pandemic started. Last week, the director of finance and treasurer of the city, Craig Miller, presented the 2022 budget. A special session is called tomorrow to discuss the budget, and the city council is scheduled to approve the budget on December 6th. There are two parts to the Barrys budget: operating budget and capital budget. The operating budget is for ongoing programs and services such as park, police, and water. On the other hand, the capital budget is to create and maintain city's infrastructure, land, etc. During the May 25th meeting, the council directed to put a cap on potential increase of tax of 2%. However, there were some exceptions, so the cap was in name only. In addition to the lingering impact of the pandemic, the inflation is making it hard to balance the budget. At 4.5%, the inflation is highest in almost 20 years. So the city has a few options other than raising the taxes. To support Barry's growth, new infrastructure needs to be built. The construction inflation of 11% is making matter worse for the city. Miller talked about the additional cost and a plan to fund it. So every year I think I've done this presentation. I think we always start off by saying this was a really difficult year to do the budget. Um, this year I can once again uh, tell you it's it is going to be a challenging year to do a budget. It's particularly challenging doing it right now in an environment where you have inflation at 4.5%. Um, and when you look at the construction inflation indirects, it's closer to 11%. So certainly some challenges for the city as we uh, move forward. We are in many lines of business and we are building a lot here. So this will be a time to roll up your sleeves as we go forward. So we do present the budget in a building blocks approach. So we try and separate out the cost to maintain our existing services. So as you can see in the first line up there, we're at 6.5%. $4 million dollars or 2.22%. So what that means, that's a net number. So that's the net impact of salary increases that we've budgeted, contract increases. Um, it's, it reflects um, a net number, so it backs out any re fee revenues that we do collect for some of our services. And what you will find when you start reading your binder is you're going to look at the line in the presentation and you're going to call or send an email to me saying, Craig, what's wrong? This number is different than the, uh, the binder. Um, since we went to print, uh, two bits of information that came available that, that we felt that we couldn't ignore, so we have included in, in the uh, um, table in front of you, and one of them is related to, uh, for cost of maintaining current service levels, it's insurance. Um, when we did the budget binder, we had a, a, an estimate in there. Our insurance costs were budgeted at $3.2 million, but um, we have since an increase of about $800,000 that has been added to that line. Um, so that's kind of where we're at for maintaining our services. And then, of course, we have some debt management costs. We'll get into debt a little bit later in the presentation, but this is tax levy supported debt. Uh, of 1.3 million or 0.46 percent. Uh, in your budget binders, you will find intake forms for new investments and service recommendations of 894,000 or 0.31 percent. The other item that's different in this table compared to your binder is the service partners line. Um, we have increased this number by almost $400,000, and that's a net number related to the Simcoe County. When we originally put the binder, uh, the budget together, their estimates were, were a, a bit lower than, than what they presented their budget, of course. This is pending uh, uh, their approval of their budget. But combined with all our service partners, it's an increase of $3.57 million, or 1.24%. And then we are budgeting growth of $3.6 million, so that helps our bottom line. Uh, and that's a reduction of an impact of 1.25%. So today, uh, when we include city and service partners, we're at 2.98%. And then when we hold the, uh, the dedicated infrastructure renewal funding at 0.75, uh, you can see that gets us to a place of 3.73% for the average assessed value. And I think it's very important for people in council to realize that 
MPAC last did an assessment of properties back in 2016. We actually did the calculations really in 2015 and applied them in 2016. So it's almost going into 2022, almost seven years. So the assessed values are much, much lower than, of course, what the current market values are. So today, um, a home, a typical average home, it's assessed at $362,000, which again is back in 2016 dollars, and a 3.73% increase works out to $167 increase. So today, 1% in this year's budget is equal to $2.8 million. The total budget for 2022 is $392 million and around 70% of that comes from taxes. Barry residents should expect their water and wastewater bills to go up. Our total overall budget is $392 million. That's the operating budget and uh, how, do we, how do we fund that? As you can see from the table here, 68% or $268 million is from property taxes. Uh, another big number, or the second biggest number on this chart, is actually at contributions from our own reserves at $46.7 million, or 12%. The user rate budgets, if you look at water, there is a, a, a proposed rate of 2.4%, uh, which is in line with the long-range financial plan, if you remember, that was done back in, uh, I believe it was May. Um, that works out to $8.75 to the average uh, home. Uh, for wastewater, a 3.03% increase, again, uh, ties into the wastewater financial plan, and it works out to a $15.61% increase for the average home. And there's no change in parking revenues. Um, the draw from the parking reserve budgeted uh, for 2022 is at uh, $1.4 million. So that's a quick high-level summary of the operating budget. So I'm just going to advance to the next slide and, and talk about the... The second part of the presentation was about the capital budget. City has a set process to determine which assets are important and need urgent attention. I think it is important just to re remind everyone that the city does take... has a prioritization framework when we look at capital. I, I think it's a very extensive process and one, one that is, is, is pretty solid. So we do start off by looking at overall risk and credit, criticality. So really what assets are failing, what, what assets need to replace, and how much should we be investing. We look at overall financial conditions and, and of course availability of resources. And then that is aligned with council's strategic priorities. Have we missed anything? And we try and fit those in there as well. And then we bring it forward to council. Um, Again, it, it isn't a, it, it's, it's an intense process and it does go through quite a bit of rigor at the staff level. So the 2022 capital plan includes 141 million of previously approved funds, as well as 201 million of new requests. It's for a grand total of 342 million. So while it says the 2022 capital plan, it, it is planned over four years. Capital projects by their nature are multi-year. Some of the probably more strategic ones, I would say the previously approved amount, it also includes the Allendale Transit Hub. And then you can see a list of key uh, infrastructure related projects, which kind of tick off some of the boxes we talked about in that some of them are related to growth, some of them are related to asset renewal. Um, so it's a blended, a, a blended mix of projects, which I believe on the 20th at the special meeting we'll be diving it a little bit deeper. Barry relies on grants from the provincial and federal governments and debt to fund its budget. So 342.4 million dollars again it's it's 2022 to 2026 because these are multi-year projects some of them and if you look at the largest piece of the pie you'll see that it's the venture proceeds at 90 almost 91 million dollars or 27 percent Again, I'll dive a little bit deeper into, into the adventure um, a little bit later on in the presentation. But then the next one, uh, the next piece of the pie is development charge reserves at 69, almost $70 million or 20%. So what that means, that number there is we take it directly from the development charge reserves. Um, sorry, actually, I've gone one step too far. The number two on the list is the tax capital reserve at 84 million dollars or 25 percent 
and that is where um, we fund a lot of our asset renewal needs, as well as the city's uh, benefit to existing benefit to existing of growth-related projects. If we dig a little deeper, you'll also notice we, we do maximize the federal gas tax reserve. You can see at 11.7 million dollars, and provincial um, gas tax as well. And you'll see that's the 10.7 million dollars. In your binders, there is a reserve section which kind of gives you the continuity of the flows of money into those reserve and, and what's coming out at an aggregate level. Um, it's important to look at the four-year forecast of, of how those funds are being spent. You will find that um, it has been fully allocated over the four-year period. So you've seen a version of this slide before. Um, this is not a cash flow projection. This is just adding up all our reserve balances and then subtracting out what we have committed. So what, how much has the city committed against its reserves? And then we kind of forecast contributions to reserves. So what we're saying here is really by the end of 2021, at this point, we're about overcommitted and on our reserves close, close to $10 million. If you follow kind of the highlighted red line there, you can see it gets to 2022. We're looking at, at $23.7 million over. Now, interestingly enough, if I grab your attention and you focus on 2024 going into 2025, the contribution to reserve line, all of a sudden you'll see a big increase from 176 million in 2024 up to 374 million in 2025. Mm -hmm. And the driver of that line is really estimates on development charges and development charges revenue. So in order to smooth out um, the overcommitted balances you see in front of you, in the 2022 proposed capital plan, we have added an additional $95 million of development charge funded debt. Um, if we didn't add that debt, this picture would, would, look, look, would look quite a bit worse. So what we're saying here is that by 2024, 2025, if development charges haven't materialized to that level and we have, uh, we have built the infrastructure required, you'll see we'd be, in, we'd be in a bigger hole and at that point, over the next two years, we'd reassess if we need to add more debt or if there's opportunities to push other projects. So just sort of highlighting to you here, it's sort of an iterative process each year through the budget um, process where we do review where we're at each year and we will do this exercise again next year. Um, not to get too tied into last week's long range financial plan, one of the forecasts they had in their Watson out to 2029 is they said you're going to need about approximately $500 million of uh, development related debentures. So this is sort of added $95 million because as you can see we, there's a need to do it but if growth does come on gangbusters and we're ahead of the game then obviously we wouldn't be issuing more debt. We'll, we'll manage it each year as we go through the process. So as you can see, the bottom line is just really showing a five-year average. Year-over-year year changes are important, but really it's kind of the average over time um, it is the most important. So you can basically see we're, we're forecasting $225 million into the reserves and $225 kind of coming out. And that's sort of what we're, or what we're committing each year. So what goes in is basically coming out again. We will continue to incur more debt for the next few years and increasing interest rates will put further pressure on its finances. So in terms of debt, as I mentioned, we have added in the 2022 capital plan 90, $95 million of additional um, development charge funded debt. So you can see um, from starting in 2022, the forecasted debt levels would be 366 million. In 2023, I'm sorry, 2022, 73% of the um, debt financing charges are paid from development charges. That number increases over the four-year period by 2026, 83% of the debt is funded from development charges, uh, which is an important part and it, it, it does make sense as we are a growing municipality investing in infrastructure. You have to put the pipes in the ground, the water and the roads and we just got to keep sure, keep sh managing it appropriately each each year as we go through the process to make sure that we we keep within our uh, our credit limits um, and i would point out the the box in the bottom is just kind of 
pointing out the standard and poor's credit rating that came out uh, last week positive news that the city's maintaining its uh, AA um, rating which is which is very good and very strong and some of the factors they attribute it to as you can see in that box there um, the institutional framework of, in Ontario the economy it's the local economy and also the broader economy of, of Ontario and then financial management uh, they look at financial management they do look at our financial policy frameworks which is what we were reviewing th through the long-range financial plan and what we update um, it, it's 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 actually I've looked at a few of, uh, municipalities and it is quite strong and really they're focusing on the past three years budget performance uh, where have we been overall and then they look at current trends and then they look forward just three years so they each year they rebase and they say where are you going they look at our capital expenditures and our capital revenues and then they come to their own uh, forecasts that they use uh, going forward so as you can see we are we are in good shape over the next three years we will bring you more coverage over the next few weeks as the council is scheduled to approve the budget on december 6th thank you for watching and see you next time goodbye